Welcome to our taster session on law at Worcester. A very strange tale of Brian and Phyllis, a law taster session. This is a very light-hearted taster session. This is an interactive session, um, difficult though it will be online, um, but you are required to actually read the following scenario and identify key issues that you think might be legally relevant. After that, um, we want you to try to match up each relevant issue with one or more of the legal subjects that we study on the LLB law. Um, those are contract law, public law, criminal law, European Union law, law of torts, land and equity. Um, don't worry, no um, legal expertise or experience is required to do this task. All just a bit of fun. Brian and Phyllis. Brian is a first year student. He's enjoying the freedom of being away from home. He goes out every night, usually returning to the house with friends after midnight and partying until three or four in the morning. The next door neighbour, Phyllis, who's very sensitive to noise and has only moved in recently, has complained about the parties to the landlord. Phyllis is also annoyed that Brian regularly has barbecues in the garden when she has her washing on the line. Oh dear. So the question for you is what areas of law are involved in that particular scenario? I don't normally say this to students in a class, but uh, get your mobile phones out. If you scan the QR code, you'll be able to input what answer you think is correct. And then there you have it. I'll give you a few moments to work on that. So you've got those options there. Some of those options are more realistic than others. Um, I've put equine law in at the bottom for a bit of a joke. Um, that's the law relating to horses. Actually, it's quite a big area um, in, in the UK, equine law. There's a lot of money in horses. Um, but we don't teach that at the university, and it's not, what, not one of the major subjects. Of course, you could study it in your dissertation if you really wanted to. Um, if you think other areas, land law, law relating to um, real estate, essentially, law of torts, torts, there are many, many torts. These are civil obligations um, which are enforceable by the law, um, obligations that you don't um, agree to. They're imposed on you by the law. Um, it could be things like negligence, legal carelessness, or nuisance. What if your next door neighbour's creating problems? Contract law, um, the law relating to legally binding agreements. Um, land law again. European Union law, um, even though we're no longer part of the European Union, um, we still have quite a lot to do with them. And many of the laws that we have in place are originally European Union laws. Public law the law relating to the constitution, how we're governed, the three different organs of state. And obviously criminal law is something that um, you're probably a lot more familiar with. It's certainly the area that most students tend to be most interested in when they start. Okay, have a, have a think about that one and, um, and put, in your, put in your answers. I'm not, I'm not gonna put any spoilers, uh, give any spoiler alerts on this. I'm just going to let you Click the numbers and find out which one's right or wrong. The situation escalates as nothing seems to have been done about Brian and he hasn't changed his behaviour. Phyllis decides to take matters into her own hands. One afternoon, Phyllis sees Brian going into his garden shed, presumably to get out the barbecue once again. Phyllis climbs over the garden fence into Brian's garden. She pushes a surprise Brian into the shed and locks the door from the outside, bolting it securely. There is a crash from inside the shed, followed by a sharp cry, and then silence. Goodness me, who would have thought Phyllis had it in her? Okay, phone's out again. Time to scan the QR code and see how you get on. And there you've got some different options there. One jumping out at you we haven't talked about before, equity and trusts. That's a subject we do in our third year. Um, very important subject. The trust is a great invention um, of English law, essentially, which was given to the world 
Um, really a, 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 an excellent way of protecting property, handing it on from one generation to another, that sort of thing. It's important in this context of family trusts, but it's also commercial trusts as well. It's a very big area, very complex area. That's why we do it in our final year. OK, have a look at those options and uh, select which one you think is appropriate. There's quite a lot there. Um, as you can probably tell, that locking someone in a shed and pushing them, these are probably things that you shouldn't be doing. OK, time for some retail therapy. So, delighted with her disposal of Brian, Phyllis decides to go shopping. She drives her car to a fully automated multi-storey car park. It is only when Phyllis leaves the car park by foot, having paid for the parking, that she sees a sign saying that customers park at their own risk and the car park operator is not liable for any damage or loss, however caused. There, you know what to do now. Phone's out again. And there are your options. You've got um, contract law, criminal law, public law, contract law again and EU law, criminal law only, public law and EU law only. Bit of a tricky one this, um, if you haven't studied um, uh, contract law in, in, the, in, the, in the UK before. It's all about legally binding agreements. Um, as I said before, we have quite a lot of European Union law, which is still within our law. And there's certainly... Um, uh, European contract law, which um, gets involved with um, many of the agreements that you might put in place. Um, these are called exclusion clauses that you often find in, uh, in, in, in car parks in particular and many other venues. The department store. Phyllis, who works part-time for an animal protection charity, is attracted by a large sign being placed in a department store window which says, Fur Coats for Sale Special Edition. Five pounds only for the first customer today. Phyllis is outraged by anyone selling fur in this day and age and is determined to ruin this publicity stunt. She rushes into the store and places her five pounds on the counter. The department manager, Mr Humphreys, recognises Phyllis as a well-known animal rights protester and refuses to sell her the coat. Interestingly, this uh, scenario is actually based on a question, on a, on a real case. There's a real case in, in, um, in America, in the United States. Um, and it is relating as uh, uh, you, you won't be surprised to see that it relates to contract law again um, when, when, you, when you go through these um, when, when you click on the QR code and find out the result um, but it also um, has relevance to another area of law um, which, we, which we teach um, uh, during equity and trust which is law, law of charity so hence I've, I've thrown that into the mix as well but have a go and there you've got the answers for you again. Um, contract law, equity and trusts is the right one there. Bit of a spoiler alert there. Bit of trolling here. Phyllis leaves the store incensed by the treatment she's received. She posts a photo of Mr Humphreys on Facebook detailing her experience and saying that he's a well-known fraudster. Now I have to admit on this particular answer um, I've been a little bit misleading. Um, so you, there are potentially two right answers for this, um, because of course I, I, I've forgotten, I've forgotten to actually point out that of course fraud is of course a crime and and also a civil offence as well. Um, uh, okay, let's see how you get on. And what we're really looking here is something to do with the tort of defamation, um, libel and, and and slander. So I was really looking for the law of torts there. But as has been very well pointed out to me by my um, criminal law um, uh, lecturer colleague, um, Nicola Monaghan, who has told me that uh, quite clearly that, of course, fraud is also a criminal offence. A pranged motor. On returning to a car, Phyllis sees that there's a large scratch down the pass passenger door. A passerby tells her that this was caused by an employee of the car park operator who drove too close when coming to empty the machine. Phyllis phones the company immediately, but after being put on hold for 20 minutes, she is informed that, as clearly stated on the car park notice, the car park operator is not liable. And there you have the QR code again for your answers. Probably very similar um, to the earlier scenario involving, um, involving the contract with the, with the car park operator. 
but also you can think about um, the activity of the car park employer and what, what area that that would fit into. There you go, have a good look. So when Phyllis arrives home that evening, all is peaceful. There is no sound coming from next door. Phyllis suddenly remembers that Brian is locked in the garden shed. Feeling a few pangs of guilt, she climbs over the fence again. Opening the shed door, Phyllis finds Brian lying dead on the floor. When Phyllis pushed him, Brian had tripped over a lawnmower and banged his head against a garden gnome. An autopsy later reveals that the bang on the head on its own was not enough to have killed a normal person. Brian had a pre-existing medical condition that made him particularly vulnerable. Quite a few issues to pick out there. So um, there are a few selections that you could make. Okay, there you go. Select your option. And finally, Phyllis gets her just desserts. Phyllis is arrested and charged with murder. In the Crown Court, the case is heard by Her Honour, Judge Wilmington, who Phyllis knows as Brian's aunt. In a summing up before the jury, the judge says that the facts speak for themselves and the evidence is so compelling that the jury must convict Phyllis. The prosecution relied on a signed confession, which Phyllis has since retracted. Forensic evidence that linked Phyllis to the scene of the crime and evidence of a clear motive because it was revealed that Brian, a secret millionaire, had recently made Phyllis the sole beneficiary in his will. Well, I think you'll agree that's a fairly crazy scenario. Lots of things to look at there. I mean, obviously, the fact that uh, Brian's aunt is Judge Warmington, there are a few key areas there. Doesn't sound quite right, does it? Um, and also that the judge seems to have effectively directed the jury to convict Phyllis. But about the secret millionaire, that's trickier. Um, but I'll, I'll give you one clue, well it's a very big clue, that the law of equity and trust often leaves things, uh, involves things with wills and estates and that sort of thing. So um, maybe that will maybe help you a little bit on that one. That's your last QR code of this session. Enjoy. And then you've got that last selection there. Um, all very interesting stuff um, there. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you that one. It's a criminal law, equity and trust, and public law, because public law we would deal with um, the aspect of bias, um, the potential bias, really, of, uh, of, um, uh, of, of Brian's aunt. Who knows? Um, it only has to be potential there. She, she might not like Brian. You never know. It doesn't matter. She still can't sit on that particular case. And that's it. I really hope you've enjoyed it. That is the end of Brian and Phyllis. Um, do remember, it's not real. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. It just gives you some idea of some of the areas of law that we teach on the undergraduate law degree. Thank you very much.